I've got a really charming problem to explain to you today and before I start on my solution and my proof, um, I want to preface this by saying it's the kind of question that I don't spend a lot of time doing, by which I mean it doesn't connect to a particular topic that I often teach, which means that the solution I'm about to show you I don't think is especially elegant and uh, I, I know that like I bet there is some technique out there that's kind of like oh this is very obvious, here's the way to do it, it's very straightforward and succinct and brief. Uh, however, I have not thought of that solution so I'm going to show you the way that I thought about this nonetheless and I'm going to try and do my best to explain it in simple terms. I could do it in very technical terms uh, but there's a good chance a lot of the people who are watching this uh, will, will not really be able to follow that proof so I want to make sure that um, a broad range of people will be able to comprehend uh, how it is that I've gone about thinking about this problem um, and maybe you know off the back of my thinking maybe that will be enough of a, a hint or a prompt that you can come up with your own solution or if you come up with a more uh, elegant way of solving and proving this then I would love to hear about it. Uh, you can post it in the comments or something like that. So let's have a look at the problem together. It says how many solutions are there for the equation x to the y plus y minus x equals y to the x on the condition that x and y are positive and prime numbers. There you go, those are the conditions. How do we go about solving this? Well, my first instinct when I had a look at this was to say, it is weird, especially when you're dealing with this X and Y business, it makes you think, oh, is this an equation where I'm supposed to graph something? Um, am I looking for a point of intersection between two curves? Because normally when you have one thing equal to another, that's often the way that you can think about it. Now, we will get to um, that kind of thinking later on, but uh, this question actually is sort of um, couched in terms that make us think in terms of like number theory. Uh, number theory being that topic where we're dealing with whole numbers. Um, all prime numbers are whole and saying it's positive is a, it's slightly redundant, but uh, it's probably good just to make sure it's, it's rigorous that we include that condition there as well. Now, what I'm going to do is sort of walk you through my thinking process. So I'm not just going to straight away show you an answer, but I'm going to try and, and give you insight into my brain and the way I thought this through. Okay. Now, my first uh, sort of instinct was to take this equation that uh, the question hands to us and to say, well, okay, if I just take this and do a fairly straightforward manipulation to it, um, you can uh, reframe or restate this equation in a way that allows you to see a, a fairly crucial insight about this equation, which is if I take that, uh, that term right there, that minus x, if I add x to both sides, have a look at what we get. I'm going to write that x to the y plus y remaining on the left hand side and then on the right hand side I get y to the x and then here comes the plus x which I just added uh, to both sides. Now, What's going on here? What difference does it make that I've put this over here on the right hand side of the equation? Stare closely at this equation and I wonder if you notice it has any interesting properties. Maybe if I say it aloud you might see it more clearly. x to the y plus y equals y to the x plus x. Do you see that this equation as written, um, and much more than how it was in its original form, this equation is marvelously symmetrical. There is a kind of symmetry and matching and correspondence between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. If I were, for example, to take the x's on the left-hand side, which is only one, and the y's, actually maybe I'll just use a different color there, the y's, on the left hand side and if I were to swap them, put y's everywhere I see x's and x's everywhere that I see y's, you can see what's going to happen, can't you, right? The y's are going to become like these x's here on the right hand side and uh, this x in here is going to become like this y on the right hand side. So by switching the variables around, by swapping them, you can transfer back and forth between the left and the right hand side. Now what that means is, and again looking at the conditions that we've been provided here, uh, one answer to this question, how many solutions are there for the equation, immediately is, well there must be infinitely many because if x and y are kind of symmetrical like this, then if x and y happen to be equal to each other, right? If I say, you know, um, if y equals x, then the left hand side is going to be, well, every y I'll replace it with an x, so you get x to the x plus x, and the right hand side, if I do the same thing, there's only a single y there, if I swap it with an x, you get x to the x plus x, which means that 
because there is an infinite number of prime numbers. Thank you Euclid for proving that in a wonderfully elegant way. Uh, so long as y and x are the same prime number like 3 or 5 or uh, 7 and so on and so on, uh, this left hand side and right hand side are going to obviously be equal to each other because you're getting the same result. Now mathematicians often call um, an answer like this kind of like a, a trivial solution. It's like yeah it's true but who cares? It's not interesting. It doesn't give us any insight into what this equation is, like the original question. Um, it doesn't help us particularly understand anything profound. So even though it may be true, it's not especially useful. And so we often kind of disregard it, right? So if we were to add an additional condition, which is not just you know how many solutions are there for the equation, I've just established, if you don't mind x and y being the same number, which happens all the time, um, then there's an infinite number. So I can put that to one side. What if I add the condition that x and y have to be not just positive and prime, but distinct? What if they have to be separate to each other and unequal? This becomes a little more interesting now, right? Given this additional restriction on what x and y can, can be, um, well, this trivial solution is gone. I have to abandon it because I'm saying, well, this, this thing here, you're not allowed to do that. So how will I go about solving this? now? Um, at this next point, I thought, okay, well, how do I try and get a handle on, on how this equation works? And what I did was I started with something uh, fairly low, low level, that, like it didn't take much cognitive effort or thinking or intelligence, which was I just started throwing numbers at this equation. Now, x and y are positive and prime. Now, if I'm again saying, well, they have to be different, um, the first two prime numbers are two and three. And interestingly, if we say, I mean, because of the symmetry, it doesn't matter if x is two and y is three, or the other way around, if I made y two and x equal to three, um, an interesting ha thing happens when you just put in these first two prime numbers. Let's just suppose x equals two and y equals three. What do we get on the left-hand side? Well. Let's go ahead, I'm going to get uh, 2 cubed plus 3. Uh, 2 cubed is 8, add 3 and you get 11. Then when you try to add the right hand side, um, we're switching everything around, so it's going to be 3 squared plus 2. That's 9 plus 2, which again is equal to 11. So I've got a solution now, right? Woohoo! I've matched the left and the right hand side, so x equals 2, y equals 3, or again, I, I think we would treat it as the same solution if you were to swap um, around your x and y values there. It works, right? 